She's in the kitchen, I suppose. Dinner time? Not quite. Excuse me, I have to go to the bathroom. Stu, did Robert kill Johnny Spence? Actually kill him, you mean? That's crazy. I found Robert's diary. I really have to think about it. He says quite clearly and unequivocally, killed Spence at 315. I'd be ashamed if somebody, you know, Ruin this really pretty carpet. Stuart. Stu. You can go to the bathroom after you've answered my questions, not before. I swore I wouldn't tell. Son. Sometimes it's better to break our promises than to keep it. He'll kill me. Well, if that's the case, then he needs help. Badly. Look at me. Did he or didn't he kill Johnny Spence? He didn't. Not really. What does that mean? He did it in a game. Not, not really. What game? Just a game we play. Crying out loud, there's nothing else to do at Hastings. Unless you're good at cards or something. Me and Robert are good at murders. I get most of my plots out of these. Robert's better at making them up out of his head. We kill people we can't stand. Like we killed the stewardess on the plane coming up. And there was this house mother at school. Ugh. Mrs. Gwen, the bane of my existence. She was my latest. I crept into her room at 3 a.m. Three's the best time to kill people. And I gagged her, and I slit her throat, and I carved my initials in her forehead, and dumped her out the window. Then I snuck outside and dragged her to wherever they're building the new gym, and put her in and dumped concrete all over her. Robert said it was perfect, except there wouldn't be any concrete ready to pour at 3 a.m. What really happened is she got to be 65 and retired. Tell me about Johnny Spence. Stu. I'm not supposed to tell. That's part of the game, too. We take the fifth under cross-examination. Now, Stu. It was a creme de la creme as far as murders go. The perfect murder. No loopholes whatsoever. Robert broke his neck with a karate chop, which doesn't show, you know, then pushed him into the swimming pool. The empty swimming pool, get it? Obviously, he wasn't looking where he was going, fell in, and broke his neck. A terrible, terrible accident. Is Johnny Spence still up at Hastings? Well, no. Where is he? His father got transferred to Seattle. It's best when you can kill somebody who's really gonna leave like that. Or like Mrs. Gwen. You swear this is the truth, Hester? You don't think we'd really and truly kill anybody, do you? Talk to you for a minute, please. Please. I want to uh, apologize. Honey, I was wrong. My suspicions were wrong. I, I just talked this to Will you give me another chance? Oh, to prove that my son is some vicious, evil, sick little. No. That's right, no. Honey. Honey. No. Honey, no. I want another chance to make friends with him. One last irrevocable chance. No. 
All right, I'll call a cab. I think it, it, it may be awkward moving your things out in front of the boys and all that. Well, that's your decision. I think maybe it would be better if you stayed the night. Twelve-hour reprieve, huh? Thank you very much. Oh, I'll take the boys out tomorrow somewhere where you pack your things and get out. I think it would be less awkward. By all way. means, let's destroy our lives together as, as gracefully as possible. Freezing. This won't take long. What do we do? Some of your hair. Some of mine. Then I sterilize the knife. Now give me your hand. What are you gonna do? We're gonna mix our blood with our hair and burn it. That binds us together forever. Makes it impossible for either one of us ever to betray. Who's going to betray? Now give me your hand, Stu. Stinks, doesn't it? Just remember, Stu. Anybody who betrays a blood brother really gets it bad. So bad that, well, that you couldn't stand it. Morning. Good morning, sir. stay for a week, rather than having to commute every day. You mean in a hotel? You mean you won't even be coming back at night? I'll be staying at the Sheridan. They want to look over the galleys. It's more convenient that way. Gee, guess that means your opinion's really very important to them. I need to go back to the academy, Mrs. Hamilton. I'm sorry. What on earth for? There won't be anybody there for another week. My father's flying in from Greece. Since when? I called school this morning. Collect, of course. To see if there's anything for my folks. I mean, you know, Christmas and all. They usually call, at least. But there was a telegram from my father. He's coming up to Hastings. I'm leaving on the noon plane. Why don't you call him and ask him to come down here? It's a shame that you have to... No, no. You've been really great people, and it's been really great being here, you know, the watch and the ties and all, but... Well, I haven't seen my dad in about a million years. You know. Come on, Mother, let's go. Oh, darling, I don't think I'd better go right now. Well, I'm sure they'd both rather slink away without you in attendance. Robert. Well, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, absolutely. Don't stay on account of me, please. Now, we'll be glad to take you to the airport. That's all right, I'll take him. It's on my way. Let's see, come on, Robert, let's go. Goodbye, Stuart. Goodbye, Mrs. Hamilton. Be back at school, Stu. 
right? Right. Hey, what happened to your finger? Oh, you, you know. No, I don't suppose you tell me. I'm really tired this morning, Mr. Hamilton. Would you mind if I didn't answer any questions or anything? Johnny Spence seems to be alive and well and living in Seattle. In Seattle? <laughs> Who told you that? Isn't that what you find out? Johnny Spence died at Hastings Military Academy about a month ago. Laura, you want to see if Stu's around? Ask him to come in, please. Yes, sir. into an empty swimming pool. Broke his neck. It's recorded as an accident, but there are an awful lot of fishy elements involved. Well, firstly, the pool where he fell was only eight feet deep, hardly deep enough to kill a kid unless he hit exactly right. And secondly, the pool had a cover that had been removed. Nobody knows when or why or, or who did it. Thirdly, the blow that uh, broke his neck came from the side. There was a bruise visible. Now, how do you fall on the side of your neck, pray tell? Of course, if you weren't looking for a homicide, it would look like an accident. If you weren't looking for a homicide. But if you were, you'd question about uh, six of his classmates. This Johnny Spence had a, an awful lot of enemies. Particularly a, a kid named Mueller. Here, it's all in here. You want to see me, Mr. Hamilton? Yes, yeah. This is Mr. Dunlap. He's a private detective. What's your last name, son? Parker. He's the one that told me Johnny Spence's death was a, a figment of my stepson's imagination. What's your uh, stepson's name? Robert Mueller. <laughs> Turn this and my report and the boy over to the police, Mr. Hamlet. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I'll race you. Oh, no, Robert. I haven't been on a horse in a long time. Yeah. Spence said something dumb about Robert's father. I don't know why he said it. He knew Robert. Maybe he just got sick of the bragging. Anyhow, they started fighting. Really fighting. 